Hello, today is Wednesday, March 21st. I'm your host, Kevin Lim. I'm one of the co-founders of the Center for Progressive Urban Politics. I'm doing this podcast remotely. I'm spending some time in the Bay Area. And today we have a fantastic interview lined up with you. And that is with Dr. Shiva Ayadore. And he is running for Senate as an independent in the state of Massachusetts. So here is my interview with Dr. Ayadore. Here at the Center for Progressive Urban Politics, we believe that by putting aside divisive labels such as Democrat versus Republican and asking what is the most prudent course of action based on common sense, tradition, and moderation, we can make a difference in our communities, big and small. This is why I'm really excited to be here today with Dr. Shiva Ayadure, who is an independent candidate for Senator of Massachusetts. And he's gonna be running against Elizabeth Warren, who ha was the darling of the progressives when she was campaigning initially. Uh, Dr. Ayadure holds four degrees from MIT in the biotech field, and he started several companies in that space as well. Uh, Dr. Ayadure was born in India and immigrated to the U.S. as a child. And what makes this unusual, he was born into one of the lower castes of Indian society. And during our interview, I want to delve more into that, as I think it will be a learning opportunity for many Americans. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Dr. Ayadure. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Well, real pleasure to have you here. And may I call you Shiva? Sure, you can call me Shiva. No problem. Wonderful. Um, well, to get things going, when you look at your resume, I got to ask, were you considered a child prodigy? You know, some people have used that term, but I just consider myself somebody who just worked hard and believed I was very fortunate to be able to have come to this country. And uh, I always, um, you know, anything I've done, I've always enjoyed what I did. Even as a kid, I was always tinkering around, be it playing baseball or whatever I did. I, I always enjoyed what I did. So, uh, and I, you know, I applied myself. I was very dedicated uh, to anything I did. This, well, there's a wonderful anecdote in your life about you were age 14, 1978, when usually you'd find it would be an IBM Selectric on the desktop in any business but you had designed an email program uh, for a uh, healthcare enterprise. That's is that correct? Yeah, in fact, I invented the first email system. You see, so if you, have, if you understand, when I was 14, I, I was very fortunate to have had the mm -hmm. opportunity to go to NYU into this very um, special computer science program, it was an intensive program where we, were, where we learned seven programming languages. After that, you know, I still had my high school left, but I didn't really have a lot of math courses left, or for that matter, science. So I started working full time at what is now known as Rutgers Medical School in the heart of Newark, New Jersey, you know, pretty much uh, primarily African American. But in that university, which was at that time a small college, um, as you said, it, you know, there were lots of offices and the way offices communicated in those days was through two modes. One was the phone, the landline phone. Mm -hmm. The other was called the inner office mail system. And at the heart of that, as you said, was a typewriter and a secretary and a desktop. Right. And on that desktop was an inbox, an outbox. Behind the secretary's desk was these things called file folders, actual folders, you know, metal folders. Underneath her desk was a trash can. And on top of her desk was things called paper clips, uh, carbon paper. I mean, this was the way that people constructed the, uh, what was called the memo or the right. memo. And you know, when you look at that, you look at information technology, you know, there was a time when papyrus was high information technology. Yeah. And back at this time, and my, how things have changed and very rapidly. Yeah, so when you, when you look at that way of people communicate in offices, the medium for collaboration was the memo. So if you were hiring someone, you would write a cover letter, which had a very specific format to, from, subject, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, let others also see the resume and be part of the conversation. You would put what was called a carbon copy, CC. Right. And you would attach, basically when you did the memo, you would have to put another piece of carbon paper and another piece of white paper and type away. If you had to do 10 CCs, you'd be typing for a while. 
And then you'd attach the resume, which is called an attachment, and you'd put it in these envelopes with a string on it. And then that envelope got put into pneumatic tubes and sent around the office. And that's how collaboration took place. Mm -hmm. So now you got to understand this is 1978. There were computers, uh, mainframe computers. You could do this simple thing called messaging. That's not what we're talking about. Um, We're talking about the actual conversion of that entire system to the electronic form, which had not been done before. In fact, uh, other uh, computer scientists who were more looking at the technical aspects of electronic messaging thought that was an impossible feat. But, you know, I was trying to solve an office problem, and that's what I did, converted that entire system, 50,000 lines of code, um, wrote it, tested it, held seminars for it, and I called that system email, a term never used before in the English language, essentially defining email as we know today. And a few years later, I was awarded the first U.S. copyright at a time when copyright was the only way to protect that kind of intellectual property. So, you know, I was recognized as the inventor of email, forgot about it because I was really interested in medicine. Um, But yeah, so yeah, I invented the first email system.